Casey Glass here for uh, Facebook group Worship Resources and I'm um, here today with a, a tutorial we're going to call Pads 101 and uh, we very often get questions asking um, you know where can I get some great pad sounds for worship uh, do I need to buy main stage and uh, the reality is that a lot of the pad sounds that you're hearing are really not that hard to program Certainly, you can do some pretty crazy stuff in Omnisphere, and I would say that uh, the things that makes Omnisphere especially uh, excellent are uh, its kind of varied methods of synthesis, and then, quite honestly, the samples that it comes with. The raw material you have to work with there is pretty neat. But a lot of what you're hearing on records these days are pretty classic synth pad sounds with a bunch of effects layered on to make them even more super awesome. So. We're going to actually go in today and look at um, a synth that you can find in Logic and Mainstage, uh, ESP. And so if we go ahead and uh, take a look, it is right here. And I've already got it loaded up. And ESP is cool because it will let you um, kind of mix multiple different oscillators. So it's polyphonic. Um, so not only can we you know, play chords as opposed to a monosynth, but really we can mix a bunch of different waveforms uh, in for each uh, key. The downside is that the waveforms are all kind of mixed right here in the mixer. There's not independent uh, uh, filters for each of them, but that's okay. So this is pads 101. We don't need to get too crazy about things. What I have right here is uh, ESP sent to essentially a blank state. So you see if I play keys, that nothing happens. There's no sound. And we want to look at just a couple of things real quick about this synth. So first of all, we have several waveforms we can use. We have triangle, which has a very kind of tuby or fluty kind of sound to it. We have sawtooth wave, square wave, kind of a sample and hold kind of a wave. Same thing, lower octave. And then just noise. And then on the left we have organ registration. So we can change the octave that these are sounding in. So if we go to 8 foot, it's an octave down. 16, two octaves down. So we can kind of move that around to change how our synth is going to sound. So for me, for my pads, I usually basically start with a sawtooth wave because it's got a lot of nice harmonic goodness in the upper frequencies. And we can take our cutoff filter right here and turn it down, trim off those frequencies if we want to. So that's how we're gonna kind of control the edge of our pad sound. Then the other thing that you'll notice is that right now our sound is not very paddy. It's kind of almost percussive. It has a very quick attack. So the attack is the amount of time it takes for the sound to reach its initial maximum volume. And it also has a very quick release. So it, do, it uh, ends very quickly after you release the key. So for pads, most of the time, we want to have at least a moderately long attack so that they kind of fade in a little bit. The decay is the amount of time that will pass before you reach the volume that is set by the sustain slider. So the S slider, the sustain slider, is the only slider that is a volume and not a time. And for our pads, we probably want to set it pretty close to the maximum. Uh, but just to give you an idea, if I set it down low and I set the decay low, you'll hear the sound get loud and then soft. Okay. If I set the decay long, it will stay loud for a while and then gradually go soft. And so probably we want something, yeah, that seems pretty good, and I might bump this up a little bit. And then for our actual pad sound, we want it to stay pretty loud, pretty long. And at the end of it, we don't really probably want it to end quite so abruptly. We're gonna lengthen the release out a little bit. The release is a good, uh, time to play with depending on the tempo of your song. So slow ballady song, a nice long release that helps cover the chord changes is nice. Something that's more up-tempo, you're going to want to shorten that up so you're not kind of muddying things up in between. 
So for our purposes, we're gonna make a little bit more of a ballad one, so we'll, we'll make it a little longer there. And so that's starting to sound pretty nice. Now we can start mixing in other oscillators to kind of get things a little bit more interesting and, and add just a little noise. Now we can start to play with the other controls. So we've done kind of the, the major controls. Uh, this control will control how much the filter opens up, how much the frequency opens based on how hard you play the keys. Gentle or harder. Uh, the overall volume of the patch is going to be set here. The velocity volume controls how what the response curve of the patch is. So if it's at zero, it'll play like an organ on and off, no sensitivity to key pressure. If we turn it all the way up, it'll be very sensitive to key velocity. And I like it about in the middle, personally. We can add a little resonance to the filter and get a little more high frequency edge to it. If we turn it way up, we almost get kind of an organ tone in there. So let's I like that. We might turn this back down a little bit more. A little bit more there. All right, so I was saying the LFO is right here, and I like it to be to control the filter cutoff a little bit. Maybe a little slower than that. And then on this side, we have a couple other color knobs. So we can add some chorus. That sounds pretty good. And some overdrive. Overdrive makes it pretty loud, so we'll drop the. Sounding pretty good. All right, so it takes a perfectly kind of serviceable pad from nice to really nice is really the addition of effects. And the first place to start there, I would say, is with delay. So delay is nice. It's going to kind of open up the pad. Uh, it can be nice to play the pad without delay during a verse or down tempo time and then go ahead and add in delay when you want to kind of uh, bring it up tempo. And all, all we have here is a very basic stereo delay, about 50% wet, 50% feedback, tempo sync to quarter notes, and uh, we can just play with it off. It's Then we'll turn it on. So you kind of open up. I have a good amount of high pass filtering going on there. So a little bit more there. And then the next thing that I like, we'll turn the delay back off, is pitch shifting. So uh, I found this is really very commonly present in most worship uh, pad patches these days. And this is one of the things that makes it really hard to recreate with a hardware synth because typically you cannot get pitch shifting uh, very easily there. And then we'll turn it on. So you can hear there's a, just some high end kind of weirdness going on. You can try the different algorithms to see if there's one that's better. Usually vocals is best. All right. And too much is not a good thing here. So the right amount is usually right about where you can just barely hear it. 
and you can fool around with whether or not your pitch shift comes below before your delay or not, after. And then the last thing is just going to be reverb. And so what we've done here is we've got silver verb, a low, pretty low and overhead reverb. Again, we're going to do some low cutting so that we don't have too much low end mud going on. And uh, then we're going to mix it kind of wherever we feel like it should be. So now we have a little bit of that high-end shimmer going on. And these things you can all kind of play with here. As a matter of fact, I kind of feel like I want a little bit more bite here. Yeah, I like that. Super. So there's a real basic pad that we put together using perhaps what is one of the most basic synths in uh, MainSage ESP. And that's one that definitely you can take to the bank. That one is pretty usable for a lot of the work that we do. So just take a look around in main stage. There's lots of stuff there. There's lots of good raw materials. Another one of my favorites is the uh, classic analog synth that makes for a great starting point for pads. And so uh, just take a look and see what you can do. And uh, I think you'll be surprised. Anyway, that's it. This is Casey Glass. Bye.